Welcome one, welcome all to the greatest show of them all. It is the greatest crossover event ever attempted and successfully landed in the history of all mankind. This is the NFC East Mixtape. You can listen to us on any of the four SB Nation NFC East podcast networks. That's Blogging the Boys, Bleeding Green Nation, Big Blue View, Hogs, Haven. You can also watch us on either YouTube channel from Bleeding Green Nation or Blogging the Boys. I say we. I am Arjo Cho from Blogging the Boys. He is Brandon Lee Gotten from Bleeding Green Nation, fresh off of his trip to sunny San Diego. Brandon, it's great to see you. your face. You look tan. You look good. I don't know how tan I look, but thanks, RJ. Uh, glad to be back here with you, even though the listeners don't realize maybe, you know, for them, they had an episode still last week, but we haven't recorded in a couple of weeks. So it feels like it's been a while as it has been. Um, San Diego was fun. It was a good time. Definitely sunny. Uh, great weather out there. Pretty much like 75 degrees, like a high of 75 and pretty stable each day. Went to La Jolla. Uh, saw some seals, did some hiking in the Torrey Pines, went to In-N-Out, have some strong In-N-Out takes that I'd like to get to at some point. Overall, had a good time in California. Um, well, that's awesome. Um, I mean, I guess we can get to the In-N-Out takes if you want. Uh, yeah, you um, you posted on your Instagram story on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon Gunn or at Arjo Cho if you want to hang out with us. Um, you posted... Uh, uh, like uh, a picture from Tory Pines, a little video, and mm. I was like, "You're next to I don't, I don't I didn't know if you knew because you're not a golf guy." Uh, next to literally one of the greatest golf courses in the world. Were you aware before I told you? I mean, I was just because I had walked by it. There's this trail, one of the Tory Pines Hill, or one of the I don't uh, the Tory Pines trails. I guess is called like Broken Hill Trail, and that one go. It's like the southernmost trail, and it goes right by the golf course. It was kind of funny, like to walk out at the end of it and like, oh, like I'm at at a fence here, and I can see people like driving. I actually took a break to watch people kind of just drive off the tee and whatnot. Well. um, Congratulations on sort of being aware of that. Um, okay, so in and out. Um, I do not support animal style. That's not something mm. I like. But I, I can see you, and I mean this as a compliment. Like when you try something, you want to try the like the 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 way. Like you, you want the like experience that like the people who hype it up, you know, kind of are used to. So I could see you being like, give it to me animal style. Give me like the conventional, the most cliche in and out meal possible for the, the like true natural organic experience. I love food and that wow, includes... what a bold take. I, I know. I, I think about this as a separate take. I think young people now think that liking food is like a character trait, but that's a different thing. I mean, you're, you're I... not a young person, so this doesn't, uh, you know, apply to you. I just think there's some stigma against fast food. I'm not like an only fast food person, but I feel like our age, there's been some stigma against it and you should support local business only. And obviously I agree you should support local business, but I think there's room for fast food too. And um, yeah, so the fries in now, RJ, are sad to say they're they're just trash like they're, yeah. they're not good and it's it's so disappointing they weren't gross to be clear i did get them animal style and that kind of saved it a little bit um they weren't I, I didn't feel disgusted by them it was just so underwhelming that i wouldn't order them and that takes a lot for me because i think people hate on fast food fries in general like people are like oh burger king suck or oh um some people don't like mcdonald's i'm not the biggest mcdonald's fries fan but i'll still order them I can't even order in and out fries. Like they're just, they're not good at all. However, the burger, I will say, is legit. And I think it's become a common in and out take to be like, I don't get all the hype. No, like the hype is warranted for the burger. The burger to me rivals Shake Shack and in and out's a lot cheaper. So that kind of gives it a major bonus there. I got fries, a double double, and a shake at uh, in and out for 12 bucks. Like that's crazy to me. Um, I do think there is a simplicity vibe to in and out which is like part of the appeal. It's like the menu super simple. It's straightforward. One, two, three. You know, do you want a vanilla chocolate or strawberry shake? Like there isn't these, there aren't these like specialty items or whatever. And, and so it does kind of vibe with the like West Coast California flavor of like, hey, man, I just want to grab you know, my bag of burgers and fries and go to the beach and chill and eat it by the <laughs> ocean. Like the, so I in that sense, like the price point and everything, I do think that some of the simplicity has become part of the shtick, which is lame. Like 
we like you don't have to dress your employees in the like hats and stuff like that you know what i mean <laughs> like the stuff like that is, is a little weird um but i'm happy for you i'm happy that you know you had a great time you enjoyed it you can cross it off the list what's the new version of in and out that you have yet to try it doesn't have to be a, a burger or fast food joint but like something across the country maybe even across the world that you're like someday that's getting crossed off yeah it's a good question i mean there Thank are you. some fast food things still i want to get to like what a burger burger what a burger like those i haven't been to i also like much lower profile uh but del taco i've never been to mm. a del taco which they have a little bit more than like california like, i visit my friends in michigan sometimes and they have del taco but i never had been and their fries surprisingly are pretty good and i if you could pair those fries with a in and out burger, you would have something going there. But um, but yeah, those are, I guess, the next things for now. What about you? What's your what's your white whale? Mm, you know, it used to be uh, pizza in Rome, but I've done that uh, mm. and it's pretty sick. Like, you know, I, I don't know that I don't know how much of the experience like adds. And like, I don't mean like a specific pizza the way like you're talking about specific restaurants and things like that. Um, but so I've never been to uh, Philadelphia. So I would say like a Philly cheesesteak, uh, mm -hmm. maybe like on the Rocky steps, like just go the whole way. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like um, I've also like I'm really the only like East Coast cliche I've ever visited is the Boston area. Um, I've been there. And so like, I've had that kind of, you know, food and, and experience that culture. So like, I would also like to do, and I don't, I don't have like the place in mind. I'm certainly open to recommendations if and when um, I venture out there, like a classic New York slice of pizza, you know what I mean? Like on the streets of New York. So like, again, I don't, I don't have like a specific restaurant in mind, but those food types in those specific locations uh, would be sick. Well, I will be bringing up Boston later in today's episode, mm. which I guess we should start talking about. I do about. want to thank the listeners before we get to today's episode. Today is a, a kind of a one-off episode. I'm very excited for next week's episode. I don't want to ruin it, but we'll, maybe we'll, we'll say what's happening next week at the end. How about that tease? Um, wow. And we have to record it ahead of time. We're time traveling all over the place. But um, I don't know on what episode it was at this point because the timing has been so weird. We were talking about how you – I actually told my wife that you don't like Bruce Springsteen, and she was like, what? So, way to go. Uh, I don't dislike I, him. I just don't get it. I know, I know. Well, that wasn't the way I told the story, just <laughs> so we're clear. Um, she's not a, a mixtape listener, it's sad to say. Uh, wow. But um, – so, I talked about when you brought that up here – how in the episode of The Office where Michael's like trying to con everybody into the Bruce Springsteen tickets, how he the, the heart of rock and roll by Huey Lewis in the news place. And I got so many responses from people on Twitter who, who were saying, and I, I'm not trying to bag on the listeners. I think that you loyal listeners are giving the, the writers of The Office a little bit too much credit. That's my take. Um, and maybe I'm wow. just wrong. Maybe I'm, maybe I don't, I'm not trusting enough, but everybody, I don't know how much you saw BLG because you were on vacation, but everybody said that um, it was purposeful uh, by, by the office to have a non-Bruce Springsteen song there to kind of line up with Michael not knowing who Bruce Springsteen was. Do you think that's fair? Do you, do you think the office deserves our trust? Um, or do you think that the listeners are, are just kind of, again, hyping? This happens a lot like with play, like people make players out to be better than they really were in the past. Like, Is that what's happening here or do you buy that explanation? I honestly don't remember this happening. Like, so I'd, I'd have to go back and watch it. I, I know we got wow. some messages. Shout out to our good friend, the Whiskey Influencer, who mm -hmm. messaged about that, among others, I guess, to you. But I got that message while I was in San Diego, and I was just like, I was, I was too a little checked out to like really weigh in and, and think about that. So it hasn't been on my mind. Um, well, your assignment, your homework for the week is to go back, watch that episode of The Office, and put yourself in the moment, and then decide whether or not you trust the, that the writers of the office purposefully made michael look that dumb uh but the whiskey influencer did let us know that um they did play a bruce springsteen song the office did later in the series um which suggests that they did have the ability to get bruce springsteen songs um mm. so yeah it is what it is um uh, okay are you ready for today's episode brandon we've gone almost 10 minutes uh, without doing anything so i mean you know it's the dead zone i think we're allowed to to do this a little bit and honestly i think people probably like this part and more <laughs> anyway it's more it's more wide appealing i would say. well i don't know because this is this is this is maybe the the most tangential nfc east mixtape we've ever done because it actually has nothing to do with the nfc east mixtape we've talked about doing this before um we love football we love the nfl 
Uh, by the way, um, I don't know what's up with your connection, but like, so you're uh, sort of freezing at different points, and you were just frozen. The this won't work for the podcast audience, but your face was literally like, like just yeah. like all sm- like you were like smug, like Close, frozen. It was so funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, like kind of pouting. It was really funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, we love football, and obviously love the Cowboys Not and the Eagles um, more than anything. But there are other teams we kind of like, and I think that that's. That's something that's okay to admit. Like, hey, look, I'm I'm unafraid. I'm bold. I'm brave. Like, you can kind of like other teams. It doesn't mean you have a two team or whatever, but you can just kind of appreciate other teams. You can enjoy it more when they're on national television versus somebody else. You can look forward to those more, whatever. Uh, so we each have five teams that are not the Cowboys or Eagles that we kind of like for varying reasons. Um, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? We're going to alternate, obviously. Do you want to guess one of mine? Do you want me to guess one of yours? Like, how do you want to do this? You already gave kind of a massive clue for, for one of yours. Um, but how do you want to do this? Well, I think this is like a false equivalent, equivalency kind of thing. You're like, yeah, you know, it's, it's okay to have this. I mean, I think you are especially guilty of this multi-team thing, oh as my gosh. people will know I'm from there. the SB Nation NFL show. By the way, do you like my hat? For the listeners who can't see, if you're not looking at the YouTube, it's a Grogu hat. hat. You have a Baby Yoda hat. Um, so shout Grogu. out to me for that, and shout out to my friend Becky for getting me the hat. What did that have um, to do with the SB Nation NFL show? Huh? What did that have to do with the SB Nation NFL show? The hat like... didn't. But you uh, just like you know adopting other teams basically mm. left and right mm. uh, outside of the Cowboys. I mean, there's an obvious answer for me in terms of a team that i like the most let's say you were just there exactly (laughs) let's say the eagles were abolished and i had thank god thank god i love this new reality okay i don't think you do i think that wouldn't be as fun for a lot of reasons but anyway uh let's imagine a world where the eagles are gone and there's no replacement team in philly like you have to root for another team if you want to root for any team at all i think i would root for the San Diego Chargers. I want them back in San Diego. Uh, they lose some of the appeal by being in L.A. because it's just dumb. It doesn't make sense. They were never an L.A. team except for their inaugural season. But still, this is like their San Diego team. They should be back in San Diego. Justin Herbert is one of the most exciting young talents in the NFL. I already have a huge problem with this, but go ahead. I know that they underachieve a lot, but that's part of the charm is because like they're, you're not a front runner if you're cheering for them. They're They're underachievers. That's kind of like your argument with the Cowboys, but it's not the same because they don't have the history. Um, it's pretty crazy that I think you've brought this up and Stats has brought this up on the SB Nation NFL show, like how they've had so many great quarterbacks and still they haven't won. It's kind of crazy. Um, so there's some like Eagles energy going on there for me. Uh, I think Tom Telesco is an underrated GM as it currently stands. I'm not like the biggest Brandon Stilly believer. I'm not a skeptic yet, but like I'm kind of like oh, in the dude, middle on pe- him. People were so in on him because he walked up to his press conferences with Starbucks cups. Yeah. Like, oh my god, that Brandon was not Stilly me. So clear. cool. He that reads was, books. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Is is that your? Are you done with your explanation? I, the aesthetic is cool. The jerseys. You can't deny that. San Diego is a good city. <laughs> as I've been to. Uh, the people of San Diego deserve the Chargers back. They should get them back. Yeah, and the Padres. Yeah, but they should have the Padres and the Chargers. And I, that's my pick. So I think it's dumb to make a, such a big decision off of a current moment. Like to be like, well, just like like Justin Herbert's awesome. Like I'm not disagreeing with that, but like to be like, that's why that's dumb to me. Like I, I'm a big football historian. So like there has to be some historical element here. You're right that the chargers have like a really rich history, um, you know, hall of famers, you know, some revolutionary things that have happened there. Um, lots of heartbreak to your point. I do. I'm not saying the uniforms aren't great, but I think that the uniforms are so great and so popular that it's kind of like ruined the allure of how great they are. And I'm not saying they should like adjust the way that they like dress themselves, but it used to be like they're wearing the powder blues. Like it used to be this really special thing. Um, I've thought about it a lot. I don't like the numbers on the helmets. The, the lightning bolt looks so good. If you got rid of the numbers, it would look really, really, really great. Um, I don't think that they have any uniform combination i don't like now that we live in a world where throwbacks are happening with alternate helmets i want to see him go navy do the navy like you know now that would feel special you know what i mean like mm-hmm. if he did it once with the navy helmets um so yeah but um it's a fine choice i'm not gonna knock you for it um a couple more I- things i had in their favor were different conference 
opposite sure. side of the country. Like that helps. Like there's no mm. kind of you know overlap here. They've had some cool players. Like Sean Merriman was cool for a moment there. Uh, I think Austin Eckler kind of coming out of nowhere. Keenan Allen. You know, some they've had some like underrated players, fun players. LT, one of the best of all time. D- um, Darren so, Sproles, yeah. the Sproles. original. Was Michael it? Turner before mm-hmm. he went to Atlanta. Yeah, totally agree. Yep. Um, wow. Okay, I like that. The, so the approach to your first team was very different than I was anticipating. Um, so if the if the approach is you have to pick a new team to root for, because that's different than the way I kind of calculated everything, um, then then I think it has to be opposite conference. Yeah, you know, like so. I and and opposite side of the country is a really I hope good. So. Like, <laughs> that well, that really like vibes well. So if I had to pick a new team to root for right now today, like again, Cowboys are abolished, same sort of situation. And you correctly predicted this. I would probably predict the, or probably go with the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. Love their uniforms. Love their history. Lots of great teams. I love the '90s Bills, and I think it's easier to love them as a Cowboys fan because my team had success against them. You know what I mean? So like by like gassing them up a little bit, it makes my team even they're not better. a threat. Right. Exactly. Like historically, like they're they're clearly the little brother to my team. So it like psychologically, it fits for me. Um, I even love the you know 90s bills uniforms like i want to see those throwbacks with the red helmets i i love the current get-ups but like let's get weird let's experiment um obviously bills fans are great you know they're the only team that plays in new york um I, they're opposite conference still east and and have like have I, I don't know that they have like a clear threat to challenge or like to go after in the patriots anymore but they have a lot of history to try to like outdo and chase and i like that um so if i had to pick a totally new team I would go with the Bills. That would be the team I would like plant my fan flag for. Uh, but again, I have some different teams that I do like in different capacities as well. Arguably Canada's team, since you know they play in Toronto sometimes, and they're the closest thing. How, wait, how long? What was the last time they even played there? It was like what twenty fourteen, maybe something like that. I don't know. It's it's in the past decade. I feel like. Um, uh, I feel like they've talked about doing it more, but um, I've had I, a theory about the Bills. Yeah. By the way, they were like not in the national conversation at all until they traded for LaShawn McCoy that like I feel like that legitimately reminded the world like hey the Bills exist because yeah. <laughs> but like who was who was on that team before remember Stevie Johnson like th- th- that was like maybe he Why was so serious it, yeah exactly he was a kind of a big deal but other than that I mean Fred Jackson you know had a, a moment you know of, of relevancy obviously Lee Evans <laughs> Lee Evans JP Lossman wow. I I think that um Jason we don't Peters. We don't talk enough about Dick Jaron's era in, in Buffalo. So, hmm. yeah. Uh, I would say that people say that Eagles fans and Bills fans have like a similar energy. And I think there's some truth to that. Um, not It's not that Eagles fans actually necessarily always jump through tables, but I'm sure they have. And mm-hmm. it's not that uncommon. Obviously, it's more of a Buffalo thing. I kind of feel indifferent about them on the whole. I guess it's part of it's just the geographical area. Like, I just don't have a ton of interest in Northwest uh, New York. Like, whatever. Uh, don't have a strong feeling either way. I do like the uniforms. I like Josh Allen. Um, not like the biggest Sean McDermott guy because of his time. How in could Philly. you be? How could you not be? He's a Philly well, guy. Jim Johnson decided. Yeah, but, what? But, but like there was frustration there. And this idea that like the Eagles moved on from him too soon was a little silly. He, like I, my, my memory of Sean McDermott in Philly is him like dropping Trent Cole into coverage and like getting a little too uh, galaxy brained at times. Um, obviously, he's been a good and turned out to be a good head coach. But uh, yeah, so I don't really have an affinity for them, but I don't hate them. I will say a few things working against the bills. And I think like, that's a good thing. Like you got to have things you dislike. You know what I mean? Like that's what being a fan is like, you you know, whatever. Um, one, um, I mean, yeah, you know, the Sean McDermott thing, whatever, but like mostly for me, there's some, and I, this hurts me because I would love, if the Cowboys came to the Super Bowl, I would really love to see the bills do it. But, um, I am so over. I've talked about this on the Espionation NFL show. All the complaining about the coin sure. toss and like it is getting so old. I mean, and I know that Josh Allen is asked about it sometimes, and so he just has to answer questions. But like this idea that the Bills were robbed and that the the NFL had to change, like that is so. That is some massive loser energy in my book. Um, but that pains me because I'm, you know, I don't want to see this happen to them. Like this is if 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 the NFL rewards them the way they did the Saints after the rule change happened for them, some dark days are ahead for the Buffalo Bills. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is I like when um, when a team has an obvious place in their city. 
Uh, for example, like if you're the new like hot dude in Philadelphia, right? Like for the Eagles, you know, you go throw out the first pitch for the Phillies, right? You go drop the puck for the Flyers, whatever. Like I like the kind of partnership that you can have with other teams in the area. Who is like, I guess the Sabres, but like there's no like baseball team. You know what I mean? Like it's, you're awkward. It's weird. Like I think the Jets and Giants kind of split with the, the Mets and Yankees. Like, or, you know, you have some crossover, but still it's a little bit more understood. The Bills are just kind of in this weird, you know, Bermuda Triangle, so, so to speak. I wrote down here uh, in my prep uh, about like, I wonder how Washington fans and Giants fans feel, because obviously we're not getting their perspective today about some of these nearby teams. And I, I, I wonder how Giants fans feel about the Bills, especially hiring Dable and Shane. Like, I wonder, is there any kind of like affinity for them? I mean, obviously, maybe not in a hardcore way, but like, okay, since the Giants have been so bad and if the Bills are doing well, like, okay, is that cool to them? Or they do they just probably, I feel like they probably don't care about I, Buffalo. I think that those things happen and evolve over time. Like I'm sure like, like Patriots fans probably hate the Giants, like for obvious reasons. Right. Um, but like, I think that happens. Like I bet Panthers fans recently have started to kind of find like Washington annoying because of mm. Ron Rivera and like all the defections or deflections or acquisitions, whatever. So yeah, like maybe this is like a new rivalry, so to speak, and the geographical ties, you know, there as well, which isn't always the case. But um, well, okay, I, well, to the ready? Bills' point, like maybe Bill Sands like the Giants because <laughs> they've beaten the Patriots in the Super Bowl too. That's times. a good point. That's actually a really good point. Um, okay, let's snake it. So I get to go now again. Then you okay. can go twice. Um, this is like this fits the actual definition I had. Like teams, I just kind of like. I have said this many times, so I'm not gonna like go super deep into it. I love NFL history. I love the Bears. Like, and I obviously my dog's name is Bear. Like, it's just like a thing. I think they're awesome. Chicago's awesome. That's a place I've had pizza in. Um, the vibe is great. Again, you got the Cubs stuff. Like, it, it all works. It all fits. It's such a great sports town and culture. It all just moves and grooves in the right way obviously you've got some legends and i love that they have one of like like you don't hear I'm, i know like eagles fans are like oh the 2017 eagles but like as far as like general nflness goes like the 2017 eagles are just another team that won the super bowl but like the 85 bears are like a template you know it, it's so hard to be a template that is often referenced for different reasons i think we refer to like the 99 rams the same way right like greatest show on turf like th there are certain template teams that people try to compare other teams to and so the bears have that like they're the like go to d like how many times have you heard somebody say like well, you know, they're not the 85 Bears, but, you know, they're <laughs> they're pretty good or whatever. Um, and so I really like the Bears. Simple logo, clean, solid, strong colors. I don't think that's shocking given that I'm an Astros fan. Um, just a great overall mood. I love the Chicago Bears. I love Chicago as a city. Don't really feel any kind of way about the Bears. You still dislike them a lot more because it kind of happens in the NFL sometimes where – you almost feel like another team is in your division that isn't actually because you end up like either playing that right. whole uh, division or you finish or, in the same place yeah, right? or you keep finishing in the same place like year after year. And that was the Eagles and the Bears, especially in the early like 2010s. Um, so I, I and the Eagles couldn't beat them or were struggling against them for a little bit. So I used to not like them more than I currently do, but they've been bad for a while now. And that, that's just not there anymore. And I and I feel like I've come to like Chicago since that time too, the city a lot. So I, I kind of like the city itself, but don't really care about the sports teams uh, as much, which is a little annoying because I think I, I would like to ideally because I like the city so much and like to be able to connect with that a little bit more. But I just can't. Uh, don't really feel any kind of way about the Bears. Don't love the uniforms, honestly. Don't hate them, but don't love them. I don't like – I mentioned this with stats on the look ahead last week on the SB Nation NFL show. I think it's weird that they still have the GSH for George yeah. Hallis on their sleeves. And I was telling stats, look up a Bears cap. Like, it's on their caps, too. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that's really weird. And the that Lions are now kind of copying this with the WCF or William Ford. Um, so that's weird, but the colors are strong. I don't like the orange, um, tops that they wear sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I just, it's, it's not like my favorite uniform of the NFL, but it, it, it works for them, for their city. Like it looks so good when you've got like an overcast day in Chicago. Like it's, it's maybe one of the best uniforms in the NFL when muddy, 
I, I know that's a weird way to put it, but I like that look. That's that's the, how I picture the Bears. I also like that they have, you know, not a great – like, what are they, the only team to not have a 4,000-yard passer ever? Um, <laughs> like, that's amazing. But I, I like that there's room for that sort of growth uh, in franchise history. They're one of the oldest teams in the NFL, one of the founding teams in the NFL. So, um, yeah, I just – I kind of like the Bears. Got a little soft spot for them. I don't like – the field there the soldier field is terrible and i think i like the c logo better than the bear itself i don't like the bear not a huge no bear. i agree with that actually um that's a, a really good take it's um i've been to a few different nfl stadiums to see cowboys games um that's that was the first non at t stadium texas stadium uh nfl venue i ever went to um so it also like has a special place in my heart you know like this is through my lens so um the bears are my answer but um we're kind of taking a little bit long so maybe we need to like blitz through these a little bit maybe not but you okay know, who's your number two so well i don't have like a ton more to talk about although i probably do <laughs> okay so i have the seahawks here and surprise oh. surprise it's, it's not just because of russ though like i actually like them before russ and i will cite using them in franchise mode back in Madden 07 with Sean, Sean Alexander. Alexander on the cover. By the way, this made me kind of think, like, is Sean Alexander kind of underrated like, legacy-wise? Like, he was, like, really freaking good for a while there. So uh, hang on. I, buy, buy me some time because I saw something today. Just just keep talking about anything right and now. And I, I feel like we just don't hear from him anymore. I don't know if anything's happened with him. I haven't, like, you know, kept tabs on him. I don't know if he's, you know, I don't, I don't know. So maybe there's a reason for that. But, you know, I feel like a lot of these former NFL greats, you, you kind of see, like, you know, you'll see Barry Sanders even pop up on, like, something for the Lions. Like, I haven't seen the Seahawks, like, refer back to Sean Alexander at all, I feel like. And maybe I've just missed that. But uh, And I feel like that maybe that's contributing to me feeling like he's being underrated here. I mean, he had the one season with, what, like 27 touchdowns? And if I'm not mistaken, that was the record at the time. I think LT surpassed that like the season after or whatever, 28. But he was a really, really good player. And I liked that team in Madden for whatever reason. I think Bobby Taylor, former Eagles cornerback, was on there. I remember uh, Trufant was like such a beast in that game. Well, so, Tupu. Yeah. I, I just, I really liked for whatever reason that team. It's it's similar kind of thing. Like West Coast, they're just far away. Um, so it doesn't feel like there's a lot of conflict. And it's not like the Seahawks were really good when I was growing up in like indirect contention with the Eagles. So, and I like Seattle. Seattle's cool. So, and then Russ, Russ being there only strengthened it for me. But uh, it, it goes beyond that. It went, it goes further back. So, what I was asking you to buy me time for, I actually saw this today, uh, the day we're recording this on Tuesday, um, on the NFL subreddit. But this was apparently posted on Monday. The title is "Did Sean Alexander Have the Worst Post MVP Career of All Modern MVP mm. Winners?" Um, and it says, first things first, the man won MVP and was a great player for a period of time. During his MVP season, he ran for over 1,800 yards and 27 touchdowns, as you mentioned. Absolutely outstanding and well-deserved. After two more partial-slash-average seasons due to injuries, he was done in the league. Um, so, like, the the drop-off was significant and significantly fast was is the point um this is a strong opinion i like this one and i was gonna bag on you but you defended your like pre russ you know take very well obviously a great team that went to super bowl 40 lost some people would argue they were robbed by the officiating in that game um you know and, and some people would like if you're a conspiracy theorist people are like well the nfl just wanted the bus doing it in detroit blah 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 whatever um i mean i think that's weird but whatever um I like that pick. That's really st- – and, man, dude, that was such a different time for running backs. Like, imagine telling 2005 RJ and BLG that running backs don't matter. You know what right. I mean? Right. You like, had to have two, I thought, was the mindset back then. It was like one wasn't enough. You had to have two good running backs. Well, you know, well, Marion Barber passed away a few weeks ago. And, like, at the time, right. it was Marion Barber and Julius Jones for the Cowboys. Like, you, you're mm-hmm. right. You did have to have both of them, um, you know, both or two solid players. Um, I've always kind of thought – and the Russ era, which is weird that it's over – um kind of was what kind of clarified this opinion for me and i'd say this again wearing a houston astro t-shirt i feel like the seahawks are kind of the astros of the nfl um and like i know the trash cans are cheating you know, asterisk whatever like but i'm just talking like 
on-field success, whatever, like switching leagues, switching conferences, right? Like they're one of the only teams that has that history, you know, the Seahawks too, being an AFC and NFC team. And then the one title that you thought like, man, they're going to have like so many more. And granted, the Astros have been to two more World Series, but they lost. But the Seahawks went to another Super Bowl. They lost. I've always thought Russ was kind of like Altuve of, you know what I mean? Like they're kind of comparable and like the, the face of the success, supremely successful individually. And you have lots of other really good role players and lots of other cornerstone players like the Astros have like Alex Bregman and the Seahawks had Bobby Wagner like and and that have been successful like on both sides it's a little bit different offensively in baseball but like you have great offensive players and great defensive players and you know Russ has made things work with like role players like you know your Jermaine Curses or Golden Tates or whatever and like they were they've been very similar in my mind like I've always just kind of like sorted them together if that makes sense the beast quake is probably one of the might yeah. be the best play I've ever seen live. Like that was just so exhilarating. I remember watching that moment live and it was incredible. Just that run was just, it's, and it makes me smile now. Like just thinking back to it, that was incredible. I even like, and this is kind of silly, but like, I like when Matt Hasselbeck said, like, we won the toss and we're going to win the game or whatever. I'll, and they you're did. right. But like, I like the energy of that. I was like, yeah, like as a, as a young fan of football, I was like so fired up. Like that was different. I'd never seen anything like that. I was like, I like that. Like, why don't we have more of that in sports? Like that was fun. It didn't again. Didn't manifest into anything positive, was, but I liked it in the moment. It was um, we want the ball and we're going to okay. score. Yeah, um, and that's that, great. That he, we should see more of that. The pick six happened uh, by way of Al Harris, who is now in the Dallas Cowboys coaching staff. By the way, the former Eagle uh, too. Uh, I have but, a quick question for you, trivia question. Can you name okay. the the bird teams in the NFL? And that's not why I picked the Seahawks. Um, there are six. Is that correct? There, there are five. You have twenty seconds. Uh, Seahawks, Falcons, Eagles, Ravens, and um, I'm not looking at my helmets. I promise. Uh, I already forgot the ones I said. Um, I think you said Seahawks, Ravens, Fal- Falcons, Falcons, Eagles, Eagles, and Ravens. You already said Ravens. Oh, um, and times up. You forgot a team that plays in Arizona. Oh, well, I've, I'm, if I could forget one, I'm happy it was them. The one that um, was in the NFC East once upon a time. Yeah. Uh, it, see, like, I also like their history is so long, but it's so complicated. Like, oh, yeah. they were in Chicago and then St. Louis St. and Louis. then Phoenix. Like, it, it, it missed me. Like, it's too even, much. Even just like now, like Googling the Cardinals roster, I get annoyed because the St. Louis Cardinals roster comes up. It's like, come on. Mm-hmm. What is this? Okay. Uh, we're both two in. Um, so who's your third? Uh, I have the – so – by the I'll way, mention- like your two are really strong. I'm really proud of you right now. Okay. I don't say that all too often. You're you're doing so well, Brandon. There's a drop off after this, and I'll just oh, mention no. <laughs> the final two. Uh, I kind of have a soft spot, is how I put it, for the Jets, just because like they're right. so unthreatening, kind of like we talked about with you and the Bills that earlier. So different dumb. thing, oh but gosh. they've never beaten the Eagles ever. So like, there's like I can't take any crap from a Jets fan. Like, what, what do they have to say to me? Like, the, it used to be that the Eagles never won a Super Bowl, but now they did, just like the Jets have won. <laughs> And they've literally never beaten the Eagles. They play in the preseason every year, too. So there's some kind of, you know, familiarity with them and their roster just from that. Uh, I think Jets and Eagles fans can both agree, at the very least, that we hate the Giants. So that's always fun. And, uh, you know, having grown up in New Jersey, I was around some Jets fans. And Joe Douglas is there, who helped at some level the Eagles win the Super Bowl. So I'm not like, go Jets. I did go to a Jets game one time. My dad got a ticket, got tickets. Um, it was like back when the MetLife Stadium opened and the Jets were like, I think, looking for more season ticket holders. So they sent my dad some free tickets uh, for the game. And it was actually a really good game. It was them against the Houston Texans and the Jets came back, I believe, to to win that. Um, that was like back with uh, Arian Foster's Texans. So I feel like fine. You know, they're, they're just so non-threatening to me. I feel fine about them. They're literally tied with the Giants for the worst record in the NFL, as we know, since 2017. So I put them. And then also real quick, I just put the Steelers in here like – what the heck where, are you doing? You only get two in a row. I want to. These are kind of similar tier for me, though. And we're wrapping. Or I mean, we, I'm, I'm moving through it anyway. Uh, I just want to just let me talk about the Steelers real quick because the Steagles, they were one team once upon a time. So it's not I even have about to that. Talk about them. It's not about that. It's uh, I will say that it's funny. I think people outside of Pennsylvania think there's like an Eagle Steelers rivalry. There really isn't. And the Keystone Cup. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, do you know, RJ, which is further from Philly, Pittsburgh or Boston? I mean, I'm going to assume Pittsburgh is like, to your point. I mean, like you've set that up very poorly. It's actually first. Boston. So you're wrong, but it's like, 
Okay. So this is by Google Maps quickest time to get to each city. You should Boston. go by mileage, not quickest time. Well, uh, whatever. Quickest mileage then is what it is. Okay. Boston is 306.9 miles and Pittsburgh is 305. So a difference of 1.9 miles. Um so yeah, like even though Philly and Pittsburgh are in the same state, it's just not like a, the similar it's not like a similar thing at all. They're they're not it's not a rivalry. And my dad's family had a bunch of people who kind of grew up in the Pittsburgh area or from that area, so they all like the Steelers. And that's not to say I like the Steelers at all, but I think some Eagles fans hate them and I don't really hate them as much. And I don't I don't like Pittsburgh because the Flyers and the Penguins are rivals, but uh I can I'm fine with them. Like if depending who the Steelers are like necessarily in a Super Bowl against or, or who are they competing in the AFC, I'll, you know, lean towards them over another team depending on who they're playing. So I mentioned I've been to some road Cowboys games. We uh, my dad and I were at the 2016 Cowboys Steelers game, which you'll recall was the, the Zeke walk off. The fake and, spike um, too. Yeah. I loved that trip and some some of it was like the game i think i've told you before too um this is a story for a different day our seats um we had bought them from a season ticket holder um were next to franco harris's seats. oh wow so I, I literally sat next to franco harris for the entire game we talked about like at the time like should the you know should the cowboys leave dak in you know should they go back to romo it was really just <laughs> a, a super amazing um day and an experience um, and, and again, the game like kind of added to it, but went to Permantes. Um, I, I loved the city. Like, I'm not saying it was like ergonomically well designed or architecturally well designed. It's just like I loved the vibe. It was uh, mid November, so it wasn't like overwhelmingly cold. It was perfect. And all I could think when we were driving around, like going to and from, was that PNC Park looked like the greatest baseball stadium in America. Oh, I yeah. would I would love to watch a baseball game there. Um, that's like if I'm throwing on a baseball game like on MLB TV, if the Astros aren't playing, I and the Pirates are at home, I will always watch a game there just for the aesthetic um sure. but i can't i can't pick the steelers because of the cowboys long-standing history with them um but still that makes sense the jets are dumb dude like i i was going to bring this up on the jets really quickly like i think if you and i sat here and, and and somebody said brandon you can have a jersey of any nfl team like we could easily say i want like this vikings jersey whatever but like we would have a hard time like I'm not saying the Jets haven't had great players, but like I wouldn't, I don't like the jerseys. Like there, there's not a jersey I'd like that I would want to wear. Yeah, I could talk myself into wearing almost any other NFL jersey outside of like obvious rivals and stuff like that. But like the, I would no, like I wouldn't want the Jets jersey. Like, and, and I don't, I don't know what player I would want, but like the design would be awful. Is my point. Like everything about it is gross and clunky, and they have good colors. They just mess it up. I think I'd, you'd have to go like Keyshawn Johnson or Curtis Martin, really. But again, the Kurt, like Curtis Martin's the answer, I think. Yeah. Or and maybe you go like old school, like vintage Joe Namath or something. But yeah. like the Curtis yeah. Martin, like the jerseys of that era were really gross. So I just wouldn't like it all too much. Um, yeah. But whatever. Um, okay. Well, so you're up to four. So let me match you a little bit here. Um, you mentioned the Titan or not the Titans, the um, no. the Seahawks, and you had mm -hmm. them for Madden purposes. I've always use the cowboys obviously uh like for wow. doing for except for uh when my cousin and i got to a point of having connected franchises then we had a rule like nobody can be the cowboys so i've sure. i've been different teams but a long time ago we would play together um shout, shout out to my cousin jeremy who is a big jalen hurts fan by the way uh but uh we were the titans i think it was madden 01 that eddie george remember was on that? the cover of yeah we remember the titans um yeah. And I like that. Those Titans teams were awesome, dude. With Steve McNair and Eddie George and J. Ron mm. Curse, not J. Ron Curse, Javon Curse. Um, Javon Curse. I mean, like those Freak. those teams were awesome. Like, and I so miss those Titans uniforms. I and I, miss I Jeff Fisher. Na Nashville is. All, I've never been to Nashville myself, but like obviously the culture, the vibe, whatever. Like the Titans are kind of like I have a soft spot for them. They're probably my my version of the Jets um, that you kind of discussed. Um, and to go completely, totally chalk, in the same way that you kind of brought up the Steelers, there was a little era, like a tiny, tiny, tiny little one, where I think Cowboys fans really hated the Texans. Um, sort of mm. circa 2010, 2011. Those Gary Kubiak, Matt Schaub, Arian, you mentioned Arian Foster, Andre Johnson teams that were winning the division that you know beat the, the Bengals in the playoffs. And it was really, really, really annoying when TJ Yates led them to a playoff win. And all these Texans – and I, so I went to college at Texas A&M, and I don't know how well you know the geography of Texas, but College Station is like an hour and a half from Houston. So there are a lot of people who were from Houston that I went to school with, and this was shortly after that time. 
uh, shortly around that time, I guess. And um, so all, I mean, this was in the days where like I cared a lot more about Facebook and stuff. It's like all the Facebook statuses would be like, TJ Yates has as many playoff wins as Tony Romo. But it was so <laughs> infuriating. And I really, really, really hated them for a long time. And let me be very clear that if the Texans are implicated in the things that they're being, you know, alleged to be involved in right now, then they're automatically re- removed from my list. But the mm. like they're this little brother that is OK now. You know what I mean? Like I like their their colors, their uniforms. I think they're they're one of my teams in the NFL who I think has the best look with their white jerseys, white jerseys, navy bottoms. That's a strong look for the Texans. Their stadium is awesome. Um, obviously, I like the city of Houston, you know, just in general and being a, a Texan and whatnot. I've only seen one game actually at that stadium, but it was the Super Bowl. Um, so never seen an actual Texans regular season game there. But um, yeah, I'll kind of put the Texans, but again, with the admitted qualifier that they are subject to immediate removal. I was that's interesting because I was going to ask you like what's your you know relationship with them like do you hate them do you not care about them because it's kind of like the Steelers you know question for me I think the question I would get would be one that you would get about the Texans um, okay um, I had a couple more notes about yeah, other and, teams. and then we each have one more team to get to but go ahead well if I'm gonna get to my one team then that's all i have other than a team i don't like i i I want you to pick out the cowboys biggest non-nfc east rival at this point it's the Packers. okay yeah is it currently i I think the arrival i think historically well that's a great point um actually that's a point that uh notable Pittsburgh Steelers fan Dave Damashek has always brought up and talking about the Steelers and the Patriots like how Steelers fans are like the rivalry he's like it's not a rivalry <laughs> like they, they they win all the time um so maybe the 49ers like if you're talking long-standing mm-hmm. rivalry like there have been you know blows thrown by both sides um but I I mean in a weird way the playoff loss kind of rekindled that and I think helped you know Cowboys fans of our age you know, sympathize and empathize with, with their dads or, you know, grandfathers or uncles or whatever, um, who experienced the the heartbreaks against the Niners in different generations. So I think that would probably be the best answer. But I, I think some people would say the Packers, even though it is kind of a one sided thing. Yeah, I would say the Saints for the Eagles. And maybe some of that sting is taken out with Sean Payton being gone because he was a big part of that. Although, the Eagles obviously do have the Saints first round pick uh, this coming year. Where two it, two playoff losses, right, to the Saints? The one in 2014, yeah, and then in 2018, and, and both were with Nick Foles, right, at quarterback. Both were with Nick Foles. Both games came pretty much down to the wire. Um, could have really gone either way. The second one being in New Orleans, the first in Philly. So yeah, and it's not just about that. And and, and both the were in the have, divisional round. Sorry, now that I think about it, no, uh, the first one was wild card round. Sorry, first one was wild card. Yeah, yeah. last time was divisional round. The Eagles have beaten the Saints in their last two meetings, both with Jalen Hurts as a starter in his first NFL start against them, and then last year when Trevor Simeon came to the link. Um, so. There you go. So it is a rivalry. There's been some like back, back and forth action with that one. Um, and just, yeah, just don't like them and their fans. They're very whiny fans. Um, uh, so that's the top rival. The last team I would have, and I, I don't really, I don't think like I have a ton of sympathy for them in terms of like rooting for them. And because you're going to accuse me of being a hater of this quarterback, but I have a lot of respect, I would say, is how I'd phrase it. Like I, I use soft spot for the Jets and kind of like the Seahawks. I, I listed categories in my show sheet of like I like the Chargers. I have right. a soft spot for the the Seahawks, Jets, and somewhat Steelers. I respect the Ravens, um, and how That's could fair. you not? Because they they do a lot of smart things from a front office perspective, uh, and they're somewhat close to Philly. You know, like Baltimore isn't too far away. It's kind of in the realm uh, geographically a little bit. So like. I, I don't I'm not like super jazzed about rooting for them, but like it doesn't bother me when they win as much because it feels deserved. Like because they know what they're sure. doing. It's not just like pure luck, like you know, those Giants teams that won right. the Super Bowl. Like when they win, it's like deserved because they, they make smart moves and stuff. Um, so yeah, I have them. I think I've really liked this episode, first of all. So shout out to us. Uh but you didn't even mention the John Harbaugh Philly connection, right? Sure. Like, you know, like th- there's always that sense of and that's like part of why I'm also like rooting for the Bears now is like I would love to see Matt Eberflus have success. I mean, kind of rose to prom not 
prominence, but like really, really rose with the Cowboys and whatnot. Um, and at the time, like, it's amazing to think that the, the Ravens are going to hire Jason Garrett. Like when you think about like everything that John Harbaugh's done for them, <laughs> that's amazing. But, um, and a younger Jason Garrett that became the Cowboys head coach at that. But, um, but he was a special teams coordinator. Like that, that story was beaten to death forever. And he's been there so long that it's just kind of like faded. But that is such an important, I think, element to the whole rise of, of like the Ravens success. This, you know, you could argue this century. I mean, or like their existence. I think actually John Harbaugh has, uh, is the longest tenured coach in Ravens history at this point. He's probably surpassed Brian Billick. But um, I like how we've both kind of, you know, in our own way, and I think we've been influenced by each other just a little bit, but like sorted them in the same categories. Like we had, you, you kind of touched on it, but the team we would root for if we had to give up our current team. Um, we had team we ha- teams we had like soft spots for, like the Titans were kind of my Jets and whatever. Um, and then we both kind of had the like in-state rival, but not really rival sort of thing, whatever. Um, and your final team is a team you respect. And I totally agree with you. I know you guessed that I was going to pick the Ravens. I really had no desire to pick them whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, you know, that's cool. But so like this team, I realize you will not like or a lot of people won't like. But if we're talking about respect, and I've mentioned a few places that I've traveled to and gone to Cowboys Road games. I I like so let me tell you this. When I was at I've been to one Super Bowl uh in my life. My dad and I went to Super Bowl fifty one and I kind of like I think this is this Cowboys playing that game. Anyway, um we talked about like top non divisional rivals. Outside of those teams though there are other teams that we like hate right like that just like bother us for this that's a different like kind of the opposite of this episode and i have always kind of hated the falcons like i've just i've never Hmm. liked them i've never really enjoyed them and some of it was i always felt like matt ryan never got the same criticism that tony romo did um and i know he had won mvp that season but um so like i just was always kind of like irked by them and so when it was 20 to 3 you know, I was just, I, mem- I remember sitting there and I was just like, of course, like the, the, the one Super Bowl I would come to would be the one that like justifies the Falcons. Um, and then, I, like you know, the stages of like depression or, or grief or whatever is like, I was literally like bargaining in my mind. I was like, you know what? Matt Ryan deserves this. Like, you know, like I was trying to convince myself that like I was happy about it because it was, it was going to be the one Super Bowl I went to in my lifetime. Like I was eternally going to be connected to them. And, um, and then obviously, you know, the comeback happened. And so like on one part or one part of me is extremely grateful to the Patriots for having me never have to live in that reality. But that was insane. And the fact that I got to see that in person, like I said, I'm an NFL historian. And so the fact that I got to see the first Super Bowl that ever went to overtime in person, got to be there with my dad. It was just really special memory. And then that we went to Boston and, and saw it and it was such a great trip and everything. The Patriots have a soft spot in my heart. And obviously, uh, who doesn't respect them? So gross. Yeah. The Patriots. Sorry. It's terrible. I think you actually probably enjoy that I picked the Patriots, given that the Eagles lone Super Bowl win came against them. Like I sure. feel like Yeah, but it's just it's anyone having respect for the Patriots is just it's just gross. It's dumb. I People mean like, look pet, pet, pet peeve is like not doesn't happen so much now, but I don't know, past four or five years when Brady was still there. Oh, the Patriots do it again. They're so smart. They're just outthinking everybody. It's like, is this like really high level analysis here? Like, you think like you're actually smart by pointing this out, and also not even fully true. And also, they cheated. Like, they clearly did, and like they did, and that sucks. <laughs> and it's on the record. Like, you, I don't. And people just want to sweep that under the rug. No, like they did multiple times, and there's probably multiple times more that we don't know about. At least it's very much fair to wonder about that based on the times they have been. You don't get the benefit of the doubt after that happens. So anyway, um, I, well. I will tell you quickly one story. So when I was at the Super Bowl for media night, the first night, the Monday night, I was asking Eagles players, like, are you doing anything to prepare for the Patriots potentially cheating in the Super Bowl? And a lot of people didn't like the question, but it came out after the Eagles beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl, that the Eagles literally went to U.S. Bank Stadium, where they played, the Viking Stadium, and ran a fake walkthrough to throw off the Patriots in case they were were watching that and were trying to cheat. And the Eagles won the Super Bowl, so it worked out. Um, I That media night, I spoke to several Patriots and Eagles, um, and I, I, I died a little bit inside. Wait, you were 
Yeah. Um, um, well, I don't. I was yeah. like, that's a, again. We can have that conversation later. But um, I talked mm-hmm. to Patrick Robinson that night, um, and I asked him how close he because there was a time where he was going to join the Cowboys. Like that was like a huge rumor, and I asked him, you know, like how close that came to happening, and he was like, "Man, it was about to happen." And I wow. was just like, "That sucks so much." <laughs> <laughs> that's really depressing so um yeah um i uh do not enjoy remembering that week anyway um this was cool so who was on my list i had bills uh bills bears titans texans patriots you had chargers uh seahawks, seahawks. Jets, Steelers Ravens. Steelers, Ravens. Whose list do you like better? He is on Twitter and Instagram at Benagon. I am on Twitter and Instagram at RJ Ochoa. BLG, it's time for us to go. So give us four random words that have nothing to do with one another. And one of them has to be at least five letters long. At least five letters. So four okay. random words. One has to be at least five letters long. Trunk. That is five letters long. So that I don't know if that, you're yeah. meaning that to fit that requirement or if that's it. Okay. So that's your five letter long. We got three more words. Set. Okay. Rain. Right. Long. All right. <laughs> See you next week. Oh, wait. No. Uh, tease the show. We didn't do that uh, right before we leave. Tease what's coming up next week, Brandon. Next oh, week somebody. on the NFC East Mixtape. Some might say the ending of this episode, how it was handled, was a dumpster fire. So we're going to consult an expert on dumpster fires and bring in Bleeding Green Nation, well, slash BGN Radio's own Jimmy Kemsky, who is currently, as we are recording this episode on Tuesday, June 20th, working his way through the dumpster fire series on Philly Voice. We will be back with him to talk about, I think, the strongest reasons why each team in the division could be a dumpster fire during the 2022 season. Give us a sound effect of the flames of a dumpster fire, and then we really leave. It's like a thunderstorm, but whatever.